picture yourself feasting upon a dragon's essence. Landbound warrior, follow your desire. Sate your boundless appetite. Seek the jagged peak and slay the foul beast. Devour its throbbing heart. Landbound warrior, Placidusax has shown your kind what must be done. Seek communion. Feel the euphoria of a dragon's essence taking root in your meager frame. <laughs> Dragon and his wrath. Welcome, Landbound Warrior. In today's video, I will be playing through Elden Ring's DLC as a legendary Dragon Warrior. Unlike Poe the Panda, a Dragon Warrior does not use Kung Fu, but a combination of both Dragon Slaying and Dragon Communion. For dragons are fire made flesh, and fire is power. Just ask Mesmer, he'll tell you the same. In the embrace of Mesmer's flame. Attaboy, you tell him. Our journey starts where else but at the home of the Dragon Lord, Baram Azula. It's here that we pick up the Drake Knight set, and by our alteration, we remove the wings as we have not yet partaken in Dragon Communion. There is much to be done for the Dragon Warrior. And what kind of warrior would we be with no whip? So, for our first dragon slaying weapon, we have a little bit of a journey. Traveling east from the castle front side of Grace, we take a sneaky route and arrive at the Elder's Hovel, where we can pick up the Talisman of the Dread, which will certainly be useful later. Seek the Jagged Peak indeed. Continuing forth to the Fort of Reprimand, we make sure to touch the grace, as we will be back here shortly. Goodness gracious, this view gets me every time. Bellissimo. Then, a short trip later, we arrive at the ruined forge of Starfall Past to pick up the Smith Script Spear. And while we're here, we may as well pick up the Smithing Talisman. If I could choose a weapon to slay a dragon, a spear that could be endlessly thrown would certainly be up there with my top choices. Combine that with the smithing talisman and we're off to a decent start. But boy oh boy is there more to do. So stick around, landbound warrior, and you will gaze upon true dread. Returning to the Fort of Reprimand, I wanted to upgrade my spear, which is where Black Knight Idrid comes in. And after impaling him a couple of times, we can pick up the aspect of the Crucible Wings Ash of War, or as I like to call it, the Budget Dragon Wings. At this point though, it is time to seeketh the Jagged Peak. And on the way there, we stop off at a true Drake Warrior, Egon. Now, I thought about killing him here as he has a weapon we require, but I thought the comment section might riot if I killed Egon in a Dragon Hunter video, so I resisted the urge. Oops. Thanks for the great bow though, buddy. There can only be one Dragon Warrior. To further assert my draconic dominance, 
I proceed forth to slay the ancient dragon man. Wow, what a pathetic excuse for a dragon warrior. Make that times two, as after proceeding through the aptly named Dragon's Pit, we can go toe to toe with the real ancient dragon man, who does hit really hard with that nasty katana of his, but is no match for the superior dragon. From Dragon Man, we pick up the Dragon Hunter's Great Katana. Thank God, because the Smith's Crypt Spear is really bad. I try to make it work, but damn, it sucks. Then, with my newly acquired Dragon Hunting weapon, we of course slay our first foul beast and head on over to the mighty Grand Altar of Dragon Communion. My goodness, what a sight this is. Here, we speak to the ASMR queen herself, the dragon priestess. Sorry to all you Egon lovers out there, but Priestess Florisax is my favorite NPC in the DLC. What a beautiful voice you have. Seek communion. Sate your boundless appetite. Feel the euphoria of a dragon's essence taking root in your meager frame. Oh my! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Ascending the jagged peak, we run into two more foul beasts who once again fall victim to my mighty sword. Of course, if we hadn't killed Egon, he would have started talking to us right here. Stay mad, kids. A short while later, we happen upon this absolute abomination of an enemy, Ancient Dragon Senesax. Do you know why everyone thinks Bale is the best dragon boss ever? Because they put this piece of dog poop garbage right before him to make Bale look just that much better by comparison. Well played, Miyazaki. Well played. Anyway, I acquired Egon's Great Bow specifically for this boss so we could just cheese him from long range. Incidentally, You'd think that a bow made from literal dragon bones with anti-dragon harpoon arrows would be good against dragons, but no, it sucks. You can't even hold more than 30 harpoons and it takes more than that to kill Senesax. Dog shit bow. Dog shit, dog shit, dog shit. Oh my god, this stupid boss made me break character. Fuck. Dread Dragon King atop his jagged peak. Oh fearsome dragon, let me feast upon your heart. Consuming my ancient dragon's blessing and feasting on some dragon scale flesh, we're more than ready for the Dread Dragon. I also picked up some dragon communion harpoons from the Grand Elder, which are unsurprisingly pretty good in this fight. For those of you wondering what happened in the intro clip with Placidusax's ruin versus Bale, well, I died pretty much instantly, so unfortunately there will be no reenactment of the great dragon battle, because Placidusax's ruin is pretty bad. I could have maybe used it to finish the fight but as I play with no HUD, it would have been difficult to know when to use it. Anyway, enjoy the Dragon Warrior against the oldest and vilest of all dragons.
feast, feast, feast upon the heart of the beast. Consume Bale's pulsating heart to channel his blackened soul. The throbbing heart of Bale forever resists its subjugation, never weakening. One day, the fire within will consume the very body and soul of the communion devourer, meaning that Bale's tyranny will last forevermore. Sign me up, baby. Returning to the Grand Altar, we pick up the Priestess's heart and the Flower Stone Gavel, which allowed us to assume our dragon form. Conveniently, a second heart of Bale magically fell from the sky, meaning we can also pick up Bale's Flame Lightning. Wonder how that happened. Both of these incantations are magnificently powerful, yet brutally slow and have very limited safe damage windows, but they are still useful in certain scenarios, which you'll see in a bit. But now that we have our dragon form, I'd like to show you the true potential of the dragon warrior. Why be a dragon hunter or a dragon when you can be like Hannah Montana and get the best of both worlds? Let me show you what I mean. To do this, requires a bit more setup. So, firstly, we make our way to Skadu Altus, where we can begin some of Leda's questline. Then, proceeding to the Shadow Keep, we spend the next couple of minutes progressing this questline by killing Hornsent and starting dialogue with Ansbach the Goat. And, after giving Ansbach the secret scroll, we unfortunately have to invade my main homie, with Stinky Leather, for three reasons. The first being to display Bale's brutal tyranny, absolutely annihilating NPC enemies. Then the second is to pick up another dragon hunting weapon, Ansbach's Longbow. Conveniently, this questline also allows us to pick up another item, the Retaliatory Crossed Tree which enhances attacks after rolling or backstepping. Do you see where this is going? In the ancient ruins of Roa, we travel almost to the very end and hop off this ledge onto a sneaky trail where we go and pick up the talisman of all crucibles. Quite possibly the best talisman in the game, at least in my opinion. It gives you backstepping iframes and extra standard roll iframes at the cost of more damage received. But you can't die if you don't get hit. Remember that, Blackbound Warrior. For the last item we need, we go back to Skadu Altus and drop off this ledge and continue along the path where we can acquire the Soaring Arrow Sting Talisman, which boosts your bow damage and range. Okay, now let's talk about this. Entering dragon form weighs nothing, meaning you'll always have a very light load for those light rolls, while still maintaining some damage negation. Then, a fantastic feature of Ansbach's bow is that it attacks way faster immediately after rolling, jumping, or backstepping. Combine these attributes with the All Crucible and Retaliatory Crossed Tree Talismans, and it makes for a very unique bow build that allows you to attack quickly whilst also being incredibly nimble and evasive. Don't believe me? Well, how about a demonstration? Mesmer the Impaler 
is a worthy foe indeed. Let me make myself clear. This bow build is certainly fun and somewhat viable, but it is by no means good. Despite Ansbach's bow being probably the best bow in the game, it's still a bow in a FromSoft game, which means it still sucks. In light of this, Mesmer ended up being the longest fight of the run, but also the cleanest. Despite the low damage, the agility and prowess of the Dragon Warrior is more than a match for the Impaler in his dark chamber. Before anyone starts freaking out, yes, 
I got the rock hard, okay? I know it exists, and I know it boosts my bail incantations, so you can relax. In fact, I had a whole plan where I would display the almighty power of Bale the Dread against the boss, which should theoretically be annihilated by Bale's incantations. So, which would win? Shadowy sunflower, weak to fire, also in an arena with water, adding an extra lightning weakness, or Bale the Dread, wielder of flame lightning. Yes, flame lightning, which should be the perfect counter to the sunflower. And, well, the answer may surprise you. It's actually the sunflower. Even after buffing myself with Golden Vow and Shabriri and boosting my fire damage in every way possible, this thing was still not getting one shot. And you may be thinking, damn dude, relax, it's still a lot of damage. And the truth is, it's not. My bloody Fire Spark perfume bottles were doing almost as much damage as this in my first run, even without all the specific fire buffs. It's here that I came to the unfortunate realization that Bale's incantations are straight up trash. They take way too long and don't even do good enough damage to be worth getting pounded 100 times before landing back on the ground. Oh, and also, some dragon incantations allow you to dodge certain attacks that can usually be jumped because your feet are in the air, but for whatever reasons, these ones can't. And I tested it. Useless spells. Utterly useless and bitterly disappointing. But if you think the dragon warrior is going to give up because of a stupid sunflower, you are much mistaken. Well, I actually did give up on the sunflower after not even trying that hard, just because I was so mad that Bale's incants were so bad in the one place that they should be good. Anyway, for those of you who don't know, you can skip the entirety of Castle Ensis if you jump off this ledge with Torrent and land on this flagpole. Not sure how Torrent can make this jump, but I suppose he is a magical donkey, so yeah. I also figured that the best way to reverse my disappointment was to use a weapon that was actually viable against Rolana. The Flower Stone Gavel is a very good dragon hunting weapon, with good posture damage and a strong long range skill that debuffs enemies' lightning damage negation. Let's put it to the test, shall we? Get shit on, mate. I must say, the Flowerstone Gavel had me feeling inspired and 
was for sure standing out as the best item of the run. It had just proved itself to be a poise damaging monster, so it made sense to carry it on over to Roman, the saint of the buff, who is very weak to being stars broken, just like Rilana. Ramana also likes to scuttle away from you when you start beating down on her too hard, which means that the flower dragon bolt was even more useful during this fight and it made for a great combination of heavy gavel smashes and long range lightning bolts. Despite what some people say, this boss is actually very good once you've got the move set down and is one of my favorite fights in the DLC. So sit back and enjoy Ramana being viciously plowed by a flowery hammer. Elam opened up, the Dragon Warrior is nearing the end of the road. But before the final battle, we've got to deal with one of the worst fights in the game, the Inner Elam Gangbang. Except this time it isn't a gangbang, because I killed Hornsent and didn't progress more or Freya's quest. So this time it's just a 2v2, with me and my boy Natan, the Sanguine Noble. Bale's incantations slightly redeem themselves here as they are somewhat viable against NPCs, but there are still so many other weapons that trivialize NPC battles and do the job much better than Bale ever could. After putting Leda into the dirt where she belongs, it's time for the big bad boy himself. And after considering the matter, I realized I didn't feel like beating my head against the wall for hours on end. So I decided that using the good old parry strat was the best option. But using a shield isn't very dragonly now is it? Hear me out though. I quickly double back to the cliff road terminus which is south from Bellarat and continue south this time making sure to resist the urge to hit the golden rams and arrive at the artist shack to pick up a painting. Then. From the Great Bridge North site of Grace, we head southeast to this spot where this ghosty boy melts away to leave behind the Serpent Crest Shield. Yes, I know it's not a dragon, okay, but it's got wings, close enough. It also happens to be very drippy and kind of goes super hard with the dragon form. Hell yeah. We slap on, carry on retaliation, and then it's time for the final test. Ooh. 
the promised consort himself. Quite possibly the leading cause of depression and self-loathing in 2024. Despite how much everyone hates this boss, he's kind of grown on me ever since I learned how to parry him. I truly believe this is how the fight is meant to be done. And if you're not parrying him, then you're doing it wrong and you are just going to suffer endlessly. A lot of the complaints people have can be avoided by parrying him. If you can just stop his combos right at the beginning of their chain with a world time parry, then your chances of survival are much greater. Even his utter bullshit double swipe X scissor attack can be avoided entirely. Granted, the timing window is very small and you have to react almost instantly, but having a chance to block it is still better than getting nailed by it every time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and at the end of this fight, I'm gonna show the stats and sliders of my character because I got a monumental amount of requests to show my sliders in one of my previous videos, which you can also check out on my channel. Until next time, guys. Hey guys, as promised, here are the stats of the character I used, and also after that, the sliders of my character. Just a side note, I used Cheat Engine to give myself the dragon eyes, and that's not the standard eyes of my character, but you'll see that I turn off the eye thing at the end of the sliders, so you can see what it's like with or without the dragon eyes, and just choose which one you want. So yeah, hope you guys like it.